Hey, what's up my friends? Welcome to another exciting episode of Measuring Dev Skills with Code Signal. Today we're going to be looking at a task that might initially seem a little bit familiar. It, it does have a few similarities to actually a few of the other tasks that we've looked at before, uh, but with a bit of a twist. So we actually started the series, I believe, with uh, a user interface challenge, not unlike this one. Uh, but the difference is, I believe at the time we were using a framework, like I think it was React that we were using. Um, another type of task we've seen since then is this recovery style task, right? So we're kind of combining some of those two ideas here, but at the same time, this is a task that asks us to do all of this just using classic JavaScript. So we're not using any frameworks uh, or anything fancy like that. And again, I mean, that, that might be the, the exact fit you're looking for, right? Maybe your organization isn't using any fancy frameworks. Maybe you're just looking for a candidate who's very strong in just classic JavaScript kind of stuff. And we really wanna um, isolate that muscle, so to speak, right? Really all we're trying to test the candidate on right now is their ability to do the JavaScript. We can put some trust in the fact that they could probably do all of this HTML, all this CSS kind of stuff. What we're looking for is someone to do the JavaScript. Or, or yeah, it could be either that we believe that they could do this and it's, it's just not worth the time. Um, or it could be a case where maybe we have someone else on the team who can handle this stuff. We just need someone to do the JavaScript. Um, okay, so, sorry, there's a bit of commotion out there. Anyway, um, for this particular task, what we wanna do is implement this progress bar here. We have sort of like a, a questionnaire happening over here. And basically the idea is that as we fill this out, we want the progress bar to sort of follow along with that. So if we take a look at how it's working now, uh, it's basically not. <laughs> it's not updating, nothing is really happening over here. What we want is for when these fields, we want is for when these fields, we want it so that when these fields change, it updates the progress bar up top. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, and yeah, clearly that's not happening right now. So we might as well uh, go ahead and run the test. In order to do that, I'm just gonna delete this so that we don't get like a syntax error or anything like that. I just wanna see sort of what the tests are looking for, what kind of an output this is gonna give us. So while this is running, and it does take some time, you might have noticed. We might as well talk about how this is working. So basically, all the code that we have here, all of the files, this gets sent over to our code runner, which is that dedicated server we've talked about in previous episodes that's just used for running the code, right? And free of any other influence so that it doesn't depend on your processor speed, your internet connection, anything like that. Um, so it's kind of a sterile environment. You can think of it that way for running code. So it sends all this stuff to the code runner server. The code runner server is basically going to use a Selenium based browser in order to actually render these page elements, right? So it's not just like, um, it's not just looking at what it, uh, like what it might look like, not just looking at the pixels of it, it's actually, it has the ability to interact with uh, with the form in this case. So basically the, Sel the Selenium browser is doing stuff in the tests over here where it's saying, oh, okay, you know, let's select a couple of these things. Uh, maybe we'll put something in here. And are there any changes? At that point, it can sort of measure, like, is this the right number of pixels from the left as it's supposed to be, or is it within the right kind of range? And that's really what the tests are gonna to use to say, yeah, you did it, or no, you didn't do it kind of thing. Anyway, like I said, you might've noticed it took a little longer to run these tests. That's just because there's so much going on on the code runner server to actually uh, verify this stuff, right? It needs to send over all that information, zip unzip it, all that kind of stuff. It needs to actually render this, so load up the page. It then needs to interact with the page using this uh, machine driven, browser and then it needs to verify some information so you know through some means it needs to determine how many uh pixels away this is and i guess we can be specific about that as well it's it's not just like looking at the picture and and using that to determine using some sort of like optical recognition pattern or something like that it is using the selenium to actually render this stuff so it's rendered in a document object model it can actually get that information and say oh well it's this many pixels away okay so right now this thing is not really doing what we want it to do we're passing zero percent of the tests which is not ideal we could probably get that a little higher 
Uh, it could be a little tedious for us to go through all the details of how we're gonna, you know, like, okay, let's let's get the progress bar, right? Let's try to find where that thing is. Okay, it's this class, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, it could take some time. So I'm gonna paste in a uh, example that I prepared earlier. So basically the idea is it's getting each of the, each of these page elements, you know, these four uh, form elements. It's getting the progress bar itself, uh, as well as the indicator, which is just sort of the percentage, like the actual text over here. And then it's running a function that's just kind of like, it's a little sloppy right now, but basically the idea is it's just checking to see how many of these things are actually filled in. How many have a value that's not gonna be typecast to null, essentially. Uh, and then based on that, it's gonna determine the form completion. Okay, now I'm gonna hit the preview button to give this form over here, uh, or over here, uh, I wanna give that this JavaScript. I basically wanna run this JavaScript within the context of this form over here. Now there's a preview button for that because it could otherwise be very dangerous if we had some sort of thing being triggered over here that was you know, maybe stealing focus, maybe like an alert or something like that. So generally it's the safer thing to have a preview button over here. Okay, so now we can see when we make some changes over here it actually updates our thing uh, and this is basically just an on change listener so we can make it like we can put a dot key up listener as well if we wanted to uh, in order to actually make this respond in real time but you know this is hopefully enough to get us at least above zero percent of the tests so let's run that another time see how it goes oh yeah and while this is running I should probably mention this is a recovery task. So remember, that means we can only change a certain part of it. And that part of it was the ellipsis that we saw at the beginning of this. So the dot, dot, dot that we saw at the top of the screen before we made any of these changes, that's the only part that we can change. So here it's basically just saying the entire JavaScript file. Sometimes a recovery will say like, oh, this line over here, or this part of this line, like in between these two parentheses, maybe for like a regular expression or something like that. Uh, but in this case, it's the entire JavaScript file. So we can put as much stuff as we want to here. We just can't modify our other file. So again, this is trying to isolate the JavaScript muscle over here. So taking a look down here, what we're finding is, yeah, we're we're passing most of the tests, it looks like. There is one test over here that uh, it doesn't really look like we're making it past. I'm not sure about that. Maybe this is a case where like, um, where we need some sort of verification or validation, sorry, on the email or that sort of thing. I mean, like I said, this is pretty sloppy. Maybe we could change this to like a key up listener, add on another one, something like that. I mean, we have to think about it, but the main thing is I just wanted to sort of demonstrate how we can sort of make a change here and then uh, have that be reflected within our performance here. And I mean, you as a recruiter might look at this and say, hmm, okay, so this candidate was able to do 75% of the stuff here. Maybe they're worth considering, or maybe, you know, you wanna keep the bar high, only look at the candidates that were able to pass 100% of these things. Um, at any rate, the point is here, uh, in, in this case, we just have a couple of tests. If we wanted to get like really detailed information about our candidates, we could add on more tests. We could even have something that, um, that does look at like the entire image pixel by pixel and make a comparison to something that we might expect there. Of course, more tests is gonna make the test take longer, right? So it means a longer runtime. So there are trade-offs to that. But anyway, the main thing is hopefully this has allowed you to see how we can automate a process that might not seem that automatable, right? The idea of like a, a visual check on something like this. So a front-end task, that's pretty impressive, I think. Anyway, um, thanks so much for tuning in. We'll be again, back again next week with another fun type of task to look at. In the meantime, have a great week. See ya.